In today's review, Harley Quinn gets a hot new set of wheels as we have a look at the Jada Toys die cast metals DC bombshells. This is Harley Quinn and the 1951 Mercury. This now marks the third entry into our looks at the Jada Toys, DC Bombshells, Diecast Car, and Figure Assortment. We've already had a look at the Batgirl that came included with the 1957 Chevy Corvette, and we had a look at the Poison Ivy that came included with the 1953 Chevy Bel Air. Just before we have a look at the figure and we have a look at this sweet, sweet ride, we're going to go ahead and figure out how long the car stands or how long the car is. Stopping the Ultra Measuretron 5000 from bumper to bumper, you're looking at the car being exactly eight inches long. In centimeters, let's switch that over right now. In centimeters, the 1951 Mercury is 20.4 centimeters in length. Let's first set our sights on Harley Quinn that comes included with the, the car that we're going to be looking at in a second. But I have to say, like, fantastic work once again by Jada Toys. I'm super impressed for something so small as uh, Harley Quinn here, how they can capture not only a likeness, but apply pretty clean looking paint. If you look at her face, for example, they've outlined the areas of her eyes even given her eyebrows, they've even given their little markings underneath in red, and they've also painted her lips. Other companies for a collectible, when you think of it this size, even things like teeth, for example, would likely have just been painted right over all in red, but no, Jada Toys have actually gone and meticulously painted these. It's pretty incredible when you have to see that something this size, well, it's just about the size of my thumb, could be this intricately detailed. Now, of course, they make a few corner cuttings here. In the case of the sole, for example, they have, sort of have to like paint it to make it look like it's part of the boots. It ends up ultimately making it look like the one boot is a platform boot, while the other one is completely just a regular flat sole. Other than that, though, I'm really impressed with how these look. Now, I don't know where necessarily Batgirl went. However, I do know where Poison Ivy went. And here are the two figures side by side. They're about the same give or take about the same height, roughly. I think back row was also around the same height as well. You can see how very drastically different they look from one another, Poison Ivy being primarily all green, and of course the traditional colors of Harley Quinn here in the reds and the blacks. While Batgirl may be very well on a holiday, I still have her car here, so let's do some comparisons. Here was the Batgirl car. This was the 1957 Chevy Corvette, if I'm not mistaken. And then this was the Poison Ivy car. This was the 1953 Chevy Bel Air. You can see very much how they all different from they all differ from one another. They're not simply just the same vehicle and then a new slap of paint. Uh, even like the Wonder Woman, the Supergirl, and the Catwoman, which I hope to eventually have a look at. All of them have uh, their own corresponding, their own varying uh, different vehicles. And I like that they all look different from one another. Um, I think really, personally speaking, some of my personal favorites right now have been the Poison Ivy car. And I really, that's not true. I do quite like Batgirl's car as well. But something about Harley Quinn's ride that I must say I'm very impressed by. It sort of has a, like a low riding, low profile, almost tank look to it. Now, these are all real vehicles. These are vehicles that would have been driven around, this one being in 1951. And uh, you can imagine like how low riding this would be. This would be something I could imagine getting very much stuck on snow if you're in an area, a city that is, uh, is you know, shares uh, their environment with something like, say, snowy conditions. I could imagine a vehicle with such a low riding 
a body as this could be something that could get very quickly lodged in snow. We're not going to, of course, discuss the weather. What we are going to discuss, though, is this fantastic looking vehicle. I guess what I will do is I'll drive these other ones off for the time being, as we've already had a look at both of them. If you want to see more in-depth reviews of both of those vehicles, by all, mean, I, by all means, I encourage you guys, check out the review of those two when you, you uh, when you finished having a look at this one. It sort of also has like the shape of a, like a missile or like a bomb, if you will. It's very low, like I said, very low profile, a very tank built car. What I do also like is the coloring that they've given this almost a military uh, olive green with some nice accents here in the yellow. Uh, we've got a little couple of bullet casings there on perhaps a tally count here, a cross out of the Batman or Batman's logo at the very least. And then you got Gotham or Bust Harley Quinn here with her face depicted on the side there as well. White rimmed tires. Uh, they do have, they do feel like they could be rubber. Uh, certainly a dense feeling rubber. There's the, the undercarriage of the car. Very much again like the back tires almost get lost amongst the, the bulkiness of this car. On the back we've got the bombshells a little sticker applied license plate. Uh, nothing on the front, although you're getting a rather interesting look on the front, which almost kind of looks a little bit almost like the Joker. Maybe I'm seeing a little bit more there, but it does look like it's got a little bit of a Joker face to it. You've got the white, or in this case, you've got silver. You've got red headlights, and then you've got these little markings on the sides. Uh, with the other vehicles we've already looked at, they have opening, say, for example, hoods. Now this one gets a little little tight, there we go. It opens up and exposes inside a glorious looking chrome motor. In fact, everything inside, including the grill, uh, is, all, uh, is all this fantastic looking chrome and hopefully you can see all of it there. This is all metal, the body is all metal. In fact, most if not all of it is metal. The undercarriage is plastic. The tires, like I said, are probably like a rubber material. The doors also open up. There's one door there. There's the other door there. And inside you can see that they've given it a chrome uh, a mirror there on the top. They've given it a chrome uh, interior of the steering wheel. In fact, actually it looks like all of it is chrome. There might be a little bit areas there that are black. The indicator there also in, uh, in chrome. The brake pedal and gas pedal respectively, also done in chrome, while the seats have been kept primarily a black. The plastic of the seats is, uh, you know, again, I wouldn't expect this necessarily to be die cast metal when really when you think about it, so much of the rest of the car is. And we spin it around on the other side. Actually, by the way, Gotham or Bust and the Harley Quinn logo is exactly the same. Even the crossed out bat logo copies itself from the other side there as well. The other thing that this car does have is a functional trunk, which if memory serves me correctly, a 1953 Chevy Bel Air that came included with Poison Ivy, unfortunately didn't have a working trunk. I can pleasantly say that the Poison, even though the Poison Ivy one didn't come with one, Harley Quinn's ride at least, at the very least, does have a functioning trunk. If you are wondering, it does roll fairly well. I feel as if maybe the back of the bumper, you can see right there, the bumper sits a little bit lower. And while you've already got like a low profile on the car anyways, the back of the bumper I find does, like if you run it along a surface, I don't know if you can hear that or not, but it does seem like the bumper is catching a little bit on, the, on whatever surface that you have it in. Not necessarily that these would be the case that you would want to be playing with these. I mean, I think the virtue of uh, Jada Toys releasing these is that you've got these really neat collectible cars that you can put on display. Sure, sure, of course, you could very well play with these. I mean, the price point are affordable enough that in theory, if you wanted to pick these up for a kid, for example, a child wants to play around with these. And at the very least, I mean, the figures aren't super small. You would have to worry about them swallowing them. But I think these are kind of a little bit more catered to, there's the poison ivy right there. That girl, like I said, is probably fighting crime elsewhere. Uh, these are great price point for both collectors to be picking these up and just simply having these on display. 
Or I guess in theory, you could have kids picking these up and just playing around the streets with the die-cast uh, medals, the DC bombshells lineup from Jada Toys. Well, Harley Quinn's car maybe doesn't have as much the pops of color as, say, some of the other DC Bombshells die-cast cars. I really do like the design of this one quite a bit. The 1951 Mercury, I think, lends itself well to Harley Quinn for its driver. And I don't know if it's intentional, but I kind of like that Joker-esque front uh, deco that they put on the front bumper and the front hood of the car. This one does have all the functioning doors as well as a hood and trunk. So unlike Poison Ivy's, unfortunately, didn't have that. This one has all the same opening sections to it that we had a look at when we looked at the 57 Chevy Corvette that came included with Batgirl. At the time of this review, these ones should be available now if you guys are interested in picking these ones up for yourself. We've so far looked at three of the six available from Jada Toys, the other one being the Catwoman, the Wonder Woman, and the Supergirl. And hopefully, we'll be having a look at those in future videos. In the meantime, though, if you guys are interested in picking these ones up for yourself, you should be able to find them now at local retail stores. And some comic book stores are also stocking these as well. Today, we were having a look at the Jada Toys, which also falls under their category of the Hollywood Rides. This was the DC Comics, Bombshells, Harley Quinn, and the 1951 Mercury. A really neat looking car. If you guys want to go back and have a look at some of my other Jada Toys reviews, there's a whole playlist called... Yes, that's correct. That's correct, Ryan. Jada Toys reviews. I might even just say Jada Toys, but you can check that out. Swing on over if you'd like and have a look at some of all the other things that I've looked at from the company Jada Toys. In the meantime, also make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below as certainly more videos will be coming your way. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.